What is up guys? It's The Real Deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to be looking at Doom Tower and I've got a team that can clear every single floor on every single rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with one of the hardest and most annoying floors. And that's floor 94. Any floor that has Cupidus and Venus is going to be really, really annoying. And the team that we're using is right here at the bottom. So we've got Vizix. Lydia, Seal, Mithrala, and Seer. Vizix and Seal, champions that everyone get, and you should definitely invest in them as soon as you get, because they are game-changing champions. Then we've got Lydia, who you can get from Faction Wars. If you don't have her, you can sub her out for any AoE drop defense champion. But Lydia is the best in her class, and she does bring a weaken as well, so you might not be able to do every single floor. And then we've got Mithrala, who everyone gets from Hydra. And she can be replaced by Muslim Mage or Archmage Helmet, who I used to use before I got her. But she's just so much better and she brings a lot more to the table. And then Seer. So Seer is a really hard one to replace. Um, if I could really think of a champion to bring in instead of her, it would be Yakul. So Yakul, um, you know, everyone can get him. And he is a great champion. Um, I slept on him for a long time. Amazing for Arena and can be used for Finite Hard as well. Um, but yeah, so you can bring him in instead. And he brings in a lot of control and he does a lot of damage as well. But again, if you've got Seer, she is so good at just dropping people. So she probably is going to be your first choice. So we're going to open up with the A2, slow down the enemy. I'm going to throw out... Um, drop defense and weaken from Lydia and put strengthen on the team. And then we're going to use that A2 just to basically throw out a hex. And then every time we get hit by these Cupidus, you can see they're going to get petrification on them. And it basically just makes them useless. Got a little bit unlucky there. Normally, um, Seer will survive that wave. But it's cool. And we are just going to drop the enemy now. And just make sure that we focus that Arbiter. We don't want to touch the Cupidus because if we do that, then they are going to just slam us. And what we've done here, if you notice as well, is that because um, Venus has petrification on her, it's almost like being frozen. So it really reduces the damage that we do. But that's great. So we can actually exploit that. And then all we're going to do is just cycle for our abilities. And we're just going to focus on killing this Arbiter first. And then we'll kill Venus afterwards. And this is not, this is all I do. So I just go from wait. We will we just work on one wave at a time. Um, the other thing I want to say about this team is oh messed up there. Should have um, should have used the A three. Um, but yeah, what you can do is basically this team is almost eighty. I think no, actually I'd say ninety percent of the floors you can just clear on full auto. And they might take a little bit longer sometimes, but in general, you know, I just let it run. Um, I usually try a floor twice and full auto. If it doesn't work, then I'll manual it. And literally now all we're going to do is just spam our A1s just so we can get all our skills off cooldown and just use them for the next wave. And like I said, this is one of the hardest floors um, to deal with. It is really, really frustrating. You can see as well, Seer is a little bit low on HP. Um, I'm just trying to think of other champions you could bring in instead of um, Seal. And I mean, she's a great champion because she brings stun and she can revive. But I guess Elva would be another great option. I mean, any champion that can heal and revive because we don't really need that extra CC from her because we do get it from, you know, we've got so much CC on the team already. Okay, and again, we're just doing the same rotation, really. And it looks like we are going to lose um, Seer. And we've got really unlucky there. I can't believe it. One of the Cupid's Hex didn't land. I think my uh, Mithrala's got something ridiculous, like 600 accuracy or something. Maybe even more than that. But yeah, it looks like we've got a little bit unlucky with this wave. So basically, 
all we would do is just cycle through again. Gonna just, yeah, we are, we do have a pretty good chance of uh, clearing it. Let's lock out this Cupidus. And we just need to kill one person on the enemy team. So I'm gonna try and kill this Arbiter. And what we can do is use Lydia to revive the team. So that's another strategy that you can use. But again, oh, we're kind of really fine. I mean, I probably did have to try and do this floor maybe once, uh, probably three or four times just to clear it. But again, like I said, it is one of the hardest floors to deal with. All right, so we're, this is going to be a failed run. But I just wanted to use that as an example of how to use this team to get through the floors. And we're just going to look at floor 111 as well. So floor 111. And this is a, I think one, oh, sorry. It's brought in the wrong team. Okay. And this team has Rotos in it. So you can see there's a really annoying bug. It keeps going on for wall though, even though we turn it off. So any floor that has Rotos and um, Sifi, this is literally the skill that I use. And I think a lot of people struggle against Rotos, but you can literally blow all your big abilities because Rotos is not going to die because of his passive. And this is great because it just means that we can just cycle through our abilities and just kill them one by one. And whenever you can, you should always exploit this. And it's, you know, I'm just doing what I did in the last one where I just literally pick them off one by one, try and get all our skills off cooldown so we can use them for the next wave. And that's literally all that we're going to do. So just try and clear this as fast as we can. And then I'll just go through the gear, the masteries, and the champions. And I'll probably do like just a quick overview of their skills as well, just in case if people aren't familiar with their kits. And there. And then we're on to wave two. And as you can see, eight, all skills are off cooldown. And we're just going to literally just do the same again. And then Seer's going to come in with the A3. Bam! Everyone's dead! And that's it. And you just cycle through again. First on the list, we've got Mithrala. And she is in a bit of an old school build. So we've got triple perception. And the reason for that is, is because of her passive. So basically, the more accuracy she has it will basically be equal to the amount, well, her resistance will be equal to the amount of accuracy she has. So the more accuracy she has, the more resistance she has. Um, if you can use her for arena, put her in stone skin or immunity. I think immunity is the better way to go, just in case there's any champions like Astrolith or champions that don't need accuracy to land debuffs because otherwise they will land on a stone skin Mithrala and just drop your team. But yeah, so we've got triple perception. I think another great option for her is actually lifesteal. I reckon she could actually solo a lot of content in lifesteal. In lifesteal, she is such a strong champion. So gloves, we've got defense gloves, accuracy on the chest, HP on the boots. Um, this is a terrible ring. It's just because it's got reaction. I had it for arena, but ideally this would be a HP or defense ring. Um, HP on the uh, amulet with subs in resistance and accuracy. And then an accuracy banner. So total stats, we've got 65k HP, 3.5k defense, 247 speed, and then 658 accuracy, and then 272 resistance. But actually, that's more like a 1,000 resistance if you add that all up together. So skills, she's got A3 that cleanses, also puts out strengthen and shield. That is a huge, huge, that is like an amazing ability. Her passive as well, if anyone's got a hex on them and they attack, she'll throw out petrification, which is a really annoying and difficult buff to deal with. Um, her A2 is going to throw out hex, also put increased defense and uh, accuracy, uh, sorry, increased attack on the team as well, which is, you know, giving us more buffs for um, Seer to strip. 
And then she throws out two poisons on the A one as well. Great, great abilities. She's got really unique mastery. So we've got the support tree and we're going into Eagle Eye. So this is going to give us plus 50 accuracy, plus 50 resistance. And then defense tree, we're trying to make her as tanky as possible. Uh, improved parry is one of my favorite abilities, especially for Arena. This is going to reduce critical hits from by 8%. Uh, then we're taking Harvest Despair. So we throw out a Leech if we do throw out Petrification. Um, so that's great as well. And Retribution and Deterrence. So that's just going to help us get counterattacks, throw out loads of poisons on the enemy. So she's in um, Speed and Perception. We've got HP on the gloves, resistance on the chest, speed on the boots, HP on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. So she's in a bit of a hybrid build, as you can see. Um, she's got sort of 400-ish resistance and then sort of 400-ish accuracy. So you can sort of use this in Arena as well as Doom Tower. 604... Sorry, 64,000 64, HP and 3,000 defense. We got there eventually, guys. Uh, 268 speed. Um, and then the rest of the stats don't really matter now. And um, so her passive is amazing. Um, basically, if the enemy tries to revive, she will deny that. Um, if she's dead, she will revive. If she's alive, she will revive any dead champions on the team. Really, really strong passive. Counters Wukong, by the way. An amazing passive. Um, A3 is great as well. So it's a single target. Hits twice. It will play poison sensitivity, which means we'll do more damage with our poisons. Also block buffs and block active skills. I mean, this can counter champions like Leores or even like Rotos and stuff. It'll just like lock all their abilities out and they can only use their A1s. Huge, huge A2. So for now, decrease defense, weaken, and then we're getting strengthen and increase speed. So again, more buffs for um, for Seer to strip, and then just, you know, A1's just okay. But I mean, I guess it's good to have that fear though, because it can stop champions from being able to attack us. So Masteries, we've gone Support Tree, um, Evil Eye, just to push back enemies' time here. I mean, if you can, you should always put this on champions. It gives you really good control for Doom Tower. Then uh, in the defense tree, you know, we're going for survivability with blast proof, um, rejuvenation as well. So we'll get like bigger shields and better healing on us by 5%. Uh, Shadow heal can be really nice as well. So if the enemy heals, we heal. Uh, and then we're taking cycle revenge. So if we take a big hit, boost our turn meter, we can cut in and retribution as well. So we can get counter attacks. And then we've got unshakable. Um, which are going to give us 50 plus resistance. Next on the list, we got Vizix, and she's in double perception and speed. Um, if you can, ideally you put her in stun, but she is stat hungry. She needs a like really good stats for Doom Tower. Um, because we do need to, she needs to be the fastest champion on the team, and we need to make sure she goes before the enemy. So we've got HP gloves, HP on the chest. Speed on the boots, HP on the ring, HP on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. Total stats, we've got 62k HP, 3.4k defense, 271 speed, and then 415 accuracy. So A3 throws out an AoE provoke for one turn. Um, I usually do this to open, um, but... Sometimes I will open with the A2 instead. It just depends. Uh, I think the more you play with it, the more you'll understand and know when to use what. Um, the A2 is going to throw out decreased speed and give us ally protection. Um, just really, really good. And then A1 that's going to push back the enemy's turn meter as well. Masteries. Um, again, we're going support and defense. Sort of standard stuff going in the support tree and then defense tree. We're going to go all the way down into Fierce and Presence. Um, actually, this is kind of useless on this build just because um, I don't have um, Vizix in a stun set. If you have them in a stun set, definitely take Fierce and Presence. 
Um, otherwise, I'd probably take Bulwark. So that means that we're going to take damage from our ally champions. And that's just going to help keep the rest of the team alive. Um, yeah, if I could, um, I would definitely switch out to a stun set or even provoke. I think, actually, I, I personally think provoke's a better way to go. It means that we have a better chance of, because we do have two AOE here's, and Vizic's also really good for Hydra, so helps what helps us out with Hydra as well. Seal of the Drakes. So she's in a stun set, and we've got speed. Gloves, we've got HP, accuracy, then speed again. Defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, and then accuracy on the banner. And you can see we've got actually some five-star uh, five gear. It is good enough for us to get through the waves. Um, we've got 63k HP, 3k defense, 211 speed. So she's the slowest person on the team. And that is pretty slow by today's standards. But back in the day, this was pretty good. Um, and then we've got 385 accuracy. So her passive, she's going to heal allies by 10% at the start of each turn. So that's basically when she gets a turn, she'll heal um, our allies. She's got a revive. It's a single target revive. And she's also going to put ally protection on them as well. So that's going to help keep them alive. And this is why we've got the stun set for this A2. So she's going to attack all enemies two times. And each hit has a 35% chance of landing stun. Plus with that stun set, it's increasing the chance of landing stun. And pretty much most of the time, we are going to lock out the enemy. And also we can land stuns with the A1 as well. And she also throws out a decreased defense on her A1 as well, which is amazing. So masteries, um, we've got her like in a support build. Um, we sort of, we want a bit of extra HP. We're taking lay our hands to increase the heals that we do. And healing save is great. So if anyone's HP does drop, where it's going to increase the amount of healing we do to them. Uh, we're going to take Sniper just to increase um, the chance of landing um, debuffs like our slow. We're going to put on Master Hex as well because the longer that slow is on for um, the better. And then we're going to take Fearsome Presence because we've got a stun set. And last but not least, we've got Seer um, who's in Savage and Perception. So gloves, we've got crit damage gloves with subs in speed and crit rate. These are huge gloves, even though they're rare. These are god tier. Um, then we've got accuracy chest piece with triple roll and crit rate. Um, if you've got Seer, you have to put her in your best gear. Oh, we've got some really old boots here. Um, so speed boots, um, but they're only five star. I could definitely upgrade these, but I guess I've, I've hit... This, you know, I've hit the stats, so I don't need to. But um, that is somewhere I could improve on her gear. We've got an attack ring. Then we've got crit damage on the amulet. And then we've got accuracy in the banner. Total stats, 43k HP, 2.9k attack. She doesn't really need that much attack uh, because her damage is based off enemy match HP. Uh, we've got 270 speed, so she is pretty fast. Um, 102 crit rate and then 278 crit damage. She probably needs about 260 crit damage and above. And then accuracy, I've gone overkill. You probably need about 350. I do recommend getting as much accuracy as you can because it's going to help strip buffs off the enemies on the higher waves in Doom Tower. And it really does help. Um, so we've gone for Crushing Rend as her blessing. So that's going to help us ignore defense, do more damage. So obviously Karma Beam is her, is her, the bread and butter. It's what everyone uses her for. So basically she's going to remove and strip our buffs. So the more buffs that we have, the more damage she's going to do. And then she's going to drop the enemy uh, and damage is based on the enemies and max HP. But she's also going to put them to sleep as well. I don't usually use her A2. Um, I usually will lock it out if I can. Um, all it does is increase crit rate and weaken. It's not great, and we're sort of wasting a turn. I definitely prefer to use her A1. Her A1 can start to pop off sometimes. Um, so you've got a, a 20 chance, uh, sorry, a 20% chance to get an extra turn. Um, and I've had this pop off like three or four times, 
and you basically just cycle back around your A3 and you can use that again and just drop the enemy team. She's got very specific masteries. Um, so we've gone into the offense tree. We've got deadly precision. And I like to take ruthless ambush. So the first hit we do, and usually it's a first hit because of A3, and we're going to do more damage by 8%. I know some people like to take Whirling with Death. For Seer, I definitely don't like to take it because what can happen is if she kills, and she will kill a lot of enemies, she has that extra 18 speed that can sort of throw things out of sync. So it can really mess up with the speed tune of your team. So I don't like to take it. And then we want Keen Strike and we want Flawless Execution because that is going to bump up our crit damage. And then Support Tree, we've just gone into Cycle of Magic um, just to try and, you know, if we get lucky, it might reduce the cooldown of Karma Burn. And she doesn't really benefit from any of the other masteries. So that's why, again, I've not fully mastered her because you don't need to. Again, I say this all the time, you know, you need to be energy efficient. You'll be wasting energy in Minotaur doing runs you don't need to. So this is good enough. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much the end of the video. I hope this helps you um, clear Doom Tower and, you know, get that sacred on the last boss. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.